John F. Kennedy was not a lonely boy. He had eight siblings who competed with him in everything, from sports to academics. He had a loving mother who supported his ambitions and a powerful father who taught him the ropes of politics. He also had a best friend who never left his side, Kirk Lemoyne Lem Billings. Lem and JFK, as they called each other, met at Choate Preparatory School in 1933, when they were both 16 years old. They bonded over their shared interests in history, literature, and humor. They also shared a rebellious streak that often got them into trouble with the school authorities. They pranked their classmates, sneaked out of their dorms, and smoked cigarettes behind the bushes. Lem was invited to join the Kennedy clan at their homes in Palm Beach and Hyannis Port, where he became a fixture of their family gatherings. He was accepted by Rose Kennedy, who saw him as one of JFK's surprises, and by the younger Kennedys, who treated him as another older brother. He even accompanied JFK on his trips to Europe, where they witnessed the rise of fascism and the outbreak of World War II. Lem was gay, but he never hid his sexuality from JFK or his family. They accepted him as he was, without judgment or prejudice. Lem also respected JFK's privacy and never interfered with his romantic affairs. He was happy to be his friend and confidant, his loyal supporter and advisor. When JFK entered politics, Lem was there to help him with his campaigns. He worked as a speechwriter, a fundraiser, and a liaison with the press. He also served as a go-between for JFK and Jackie, who had a rocky start to their relationship. Lem helped them overcome their differences and grow closer together. Lem was proud of JFK's achievements as a congressman, a senator, and finally as president of the United States. He witnessed his friend's triumphs and challenges, his joys and sorrows. He was there when JFK faced the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Berlin Wall, and the Civil Rights Movement. He was also there when JFK suffered from chronic back pain, Addison's disease, and personal tragedies. Lem was devastated when JFK was assassinated in Dallas on November 22, 1963. He felt like he had lost a part of himself. He never recovered from the shock and grief of losing his best friend. He tried to keep his memory alive by working for the JFK F. Kennedy Library Foundation and by staying close to Jackie and the children. Lem died of a heart attack on May 28, 1981, at the age of 65. He was buried next to JFK at Arlington National Cemetery, fulfilling his wish to be with him forever.